All right, guys, what's going on? Uh, welcome to another Walking Dead vlog. Um, this is a request from some of my viewers who are looking for some diversity in my Walking Dead content. Um, a lot of my content, especially with the vlogs and predictions, especially over the past couple of months, has really just been about Andrew Lincoln's fate, the uncertainty of all of that. Um, and uh, really just trying to figure out what Andrew Lincoln's next uh, next moves are. And um, it's, a, it's a scary concept. And f I think right now I want to focus on some other stuff. A couple of fans asked me if I would ever review the comic book. Because every month, at the beginning of the month, there's a new comic book issue that comes out. And this one just came out yesterday, uh, 182. And I have the image right here for you guys. Uh, I'll impose it a little bit. Uh, so you got uh, Governor Pamela Milton uh, with John, who is now the kind of um, de facto leader of the sanctuary. Uh, now that Sherry, um, again, this is major spoilers for the comics. I'm assuming if you've watched this video, you're caught up to the comics to issue 182. But um, yeah, so... Um, because Sherry is dead, John's now the new de facto leader. Um, we had all of the every all that 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 mini confrontation that was kind of diffused when the saviors showed up at Alexandria after the ginormous Walker herd broke through. Uh, Negan comes out and says to them, "Like, really? Do you really want to go back to the way things were when I was in charge?" Um, and then he kind of talks them down and. Make, basically p pacifies them and the saviors just pack up and go home um so with this issue we're continuing governor pamela milton from the commonwealth we're continuing her tour of all of the communities and she sees i'd say just about all i think she sees all of them in this um maybe except the ocean side but um she sees the kingdom obviously at the cover of this issue she sees the sanctuary it kind of seems like John was coming on to her a little bit. Like when they were inside the sanctuary, um, the governor, again, I, I don't want to mix up the two governors, you know, one with the eye patch and now the one from the Commonwealth. But the Commonwealth, uh, um, uh, P P Pamela, she she mentions, um, because she, she asks Rick a lot of questions and she actually asks like, who is this Negan person that I keep hearing people talk about and they they Rick and her have a conversation that's I guess off screen like he's he's gonna tell her but uh, they obviously don't include it for the sake of uh, space. Um, <clears throat> you have a conversation between Rick and Mercer, which is pretty interesting because in the Commonwealth, everyone takes up jobs based on what they had in their previous life. So Rick actually says like, oh, so you mean if I went to live in the Commonwealth, I would be just some local yokel sheriff. Uh, giving out speeding tickets, uh, and I think that's the exact verbiage he uses. And uh, Mercer says, uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much, it's kind of an interesting system you have out here where um, you, you, you got free reign. I mean, you got people who will take up trades that were important to them, um, their, their, their province, so to speak, and... And uh, it's something maybe Mercer can be envious of, especially since he has to watch the governor, Pamela Milton's kid, that spoiled brat back in the Commonwealth, who's living like it's, the, it's like, no, the apocalypse never happened. He's living in some fucking fantasy world where he has his ass wiped. Um, and we, we've seen that before when the, when the, when the group first went to Alexandria, it, 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 both in the comics and in the show, we saw that seclusion from the from the from the zombie apocalypse and just uh, you know not knowing how to you know not understanding what's just the shit that's out there um i'm trying to think so then rick has a reunion with carl which is pretty sweet again it's it's also pretty sad knowing that we'll never get that in the um in the show um it seems like uh henry's character is replacing Carl, like it really seems like it. I mean, if you want that young prepubescent uh, know-it-all kid, you know that's that's who you're gonna get. Um, so we had that reunion with Carl. Um, they're actually shocked. So the hilltop is actually they rebuilt almost like instantaneously. They rebuilt from the attack from the whispers, where the where the 
Bennington house was burned down. They were able to rebuild and reconstruct and just get their get their shit together. So I was like, wow, like that's pretty impressive. So um so yeah, there is that. There is that that they they um they were able to um jump back so quickly. Um it's definitely interesting because for it's almost like a new time viewer coming through the comics because you have Pamela Milton who doesn't know any of this history. She doesn't know who Negan is. Uh, Rick mentions that there used to be uh, a Shiva and Ezekiel, which was the tiger. Uh, and she's like, what, a tiger? And so, like, she doesn't know any of the history that went down during the All Out War arc or any of that stuff. So it's it's interesting to see her genuine reaction. And I mean, she seems like a straight shooting character. But, and it's funny because Maggie senses that there may be some sort of dictator. She said, she's like, oh, do we need some some smiling portrait of you up on our walls that we pledge allegiance to every morning and Pamela Milton's like oh I don't think I smile that much like she 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 kind of the downplay it and she's like well you know I don't think we would be doing that like she's not Negan who's gonna swing a bat around and say look at me you know Neil and you know, I am Negan and you're not gonna do that with her she's She's more of like a politician. She's more like an actual governor who wants to just govern provinces and have people under her control who have legit jobs paying up to a certain system. Like she's trying to restart society, but under her terms, and it seems like they're trying to conquer much of the known, uh, you know, United States at this point. If the Commonwealth is in Ohio and then you got Virginia and the Alexandria section, I mean, you got two two portions of the map. I mean, at least the Midwest. I mean, that's. I mean the well, the Middle East, I guess the Middle East of the of the United States. We're talking um, the continent. Um, so it was interesting. Uh, Rick had some like moments where he was giving Pamela looks. Um, it was funny because both John and Pamela, or, or sorry, not both John and Rick, had these like warming up moments to Pamela, where where they they have um, enthusiastic, worthwhile conversations with her and. Uh, and, and she even says to Rick, like, so far from what I've seen, this looks like a cool place to do business with and uh, have as a settlement. And, you know, the distance would be an issue. But, you know, we, it's good to have an outpost that's kind of, you know, this far out. So it seems like they're coming to some sort of agreement. Um, and again, I don't know if I don't know if Rick is, is, is warming up to her or not in terms of a romantic thing. I mean, in the comics, which is a big spoiler, obviously, Andrea was bitten by a walker during the Whisperer conflict. And that's basically like Rick losing Michonne. Michonne is the equivalent in the TV show. So, um, but that the thing is, I don't know if they're going to do that because if Andrew Lincoln's gone and that that's a, that's a problem. Like if Andrew Lincoln's gone, that whole character arc of him losing Michonne, you lose it. And to be fair, you kind of get that with Carl. Last season, when Carl dies, you have Rick's coping mechanism, and then you have him taking it out on other aspects. Uh, so it's just like in the comics, where Rick loses Andrea, and then Sherry and the Saviors are trying to stir up shit. Sherry has a meeting with Rick, and then Rick, like, well, I think Sherry attacks Rick first, and then Rick loses his shit and then snaps her neck. Um, so... <laughs> It's kind of similar. It's like the cycle of Rick. Um, he loses someone very close to him. We've seen this with Lori. Now we've seen this with Carl. Uh, he loses that person. He goes into like this psychological insanity where he's not only trapped in his own head, but he's also taking out all of that anger and trying to project it. Uh, basically, like you know, little like 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 um like a three burst from like a, a um an assault rifle. Little bursts of anger just. Never fully released, but always thrown out in bursts. And so, we again, we saw that with the prison arc when he's just hacking and slashing zombies after Lori's dead. Um, and we have some similar moments to that here in the comic. So, um, so yeah, I, it would be interesting to see if Rick wanted to have a, a relationship. Because that's basically your two leaders. I mean, you know, it's almost like the old uh, Napoleonic uh, European warfare um where royal families marry each other and um that was your method of 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 centralizing power because napoleon i mean i'm giving you guys like a history lesson here but <laughs> napoleon bonaparte the uh the french monarch who took over after the french revolutions and had a grand french army 
He put his brother Joseph on the Spanish throne. He had relatives on the Italian throne. So he put relatives on these thrones to marry these princesses so that their families could mingle. It's kind of like Game of Thrones, where the best way to solidify power is to marry into it. Um, so that would be an interesting thing here, where you got the governor of this humongous commonwealth, and then you got Rick, who's keeping the glue together of all these communities. How, the, how do those two interact if they're in a romantic relationship? Again, I've only seen little gestures, especially from this issue. Um, so I can't really say for certain, um, but but yeah, um, in terms of other stuff, we're definitely getting more character development from John, which is nice. I mean, the, the issue starts off with him um, picking tomatoes and talking to Christopher saying, um, you know, we don't get the luxuries of the old life, uh, we're trying to rebuild. Uh, it seems like a lot of people are happy. There was just a feeling of happiness in this issue where people were bringing their lives together. Dwight actually apologizes to Rick about how just rash he was acting when Sherry died. Um, and then I forget the new girl that he's kind of with. Uh, Laura, I think it is. Uh, which, I don't know if it's the same Laura from the show, but I mean, I guess you could make it the same character. But uh, yeah, it looks like Dwight has this new relationship spudding up with um, uh, another uh, Sanctuary character. Um, and he rectifies things with Rick. Um, so there's, there, there, there seems to be... Um, this calmness, this calmness that's that's coming from this meeting. I was expecting some sort of hostilities, especially the 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 cover of the previous issue, where you have all of those um, super soldiers with the body armor standing outside Alexandria and Rick standing there. It definitely looked like a you know an an, an issue one hundred kind of thing where you know all these guys have Rick at gunpoint. Um, and Rick has to bow and submit to what whoever's new world order it is, and that's what the that's what that arc was that six part arc where we first see the Commonwealth. It was called the New World Order, and that comes from a conversation that Rick has with Pamela because Pamela's like, oh, we're just going to have this class system and just go back to you know lower middle and upper class. And Rick's like, no, I think it's time for a new world order where we do away with that old way of life because clearly it didn't work, and we're we're going to do something different. So. It'll be a clash of ideologies and a different type of ideologies. And again, Kirkman's done this with all of his villains. Negan was the dictator. The Whisperers were the savages who were trying to regress. Uh, the Commonwealth is trying to progress and bring civilization back. Um, Alexandria was trying to do that in a way, but they were just more like novices. Um, so yeah, every civilization have, has its own theme, especially with the villains. Um, and I think there are arcs that Kirkman's taking us through. But I do have to say, like, I don't know where, like, obviously, I've looked at the covers the for the next couple of comic book issues. There seems to be a big riot going on in the Commonwealth, which doesn't look good. Um, we're moving steadily towards issue 200, which, I mean, if you, obviously, you guys know issue 100 was monumental. And even in the TV show, when they adapted it, it was monumental. So I don't know how they're going to do, what are they going to do for issue 200, you know? And, um, you know, who knows? I, it's, I don't, the, the thing is, I think, so my point was, I don't know where they're going to, for. Where, where are they going in the story with this comic issue? Because right now it's just this long drawn out process of relationships between the Commonwealth and Rick's group, which for two, three issues now seem to be okay especially this most recent issue it seems like there aren't really many problems at all it seems like everyone's you know happy the, the relationships are going well the relations are going well um so there doesn't seem to be uh any animosity um sprouting from these conversations and there may be a difference in ideologies but those seem to be like i seem to get the sense that those are being hashed out that there's not an, there's not some overarching um issue with that um so i i don't know i don't know it seems like the only thing is mercer has talked about possibly overthrowing the commonwealth because he's tired of how things are that was the conversation that sadiq uh overheard um and so it, maybe the commonwealth will destroy itself from the inside and then rick will have to decide if he you know will, will he take a stance in this new war that's budding that's sprouting up 
I don't know. I, I just, I think that's what's, the, with the show, that's why people have a problem, is because they don't know where the show's going. Like, are we moving towards a cure? Are we moving towards perfect utopian civilization where we get things back to somewhat how they were? Like, what's the end game for the show? And I've, I've made a couple of vlogs in the past about this, like what the true end game of The Walking Dead is. Maybe I'll make another one just to kind of bring it up uh, at a future date. But, um... You know, I don't know, as these comic book issues go on and we get into issue 200, I mean, Robert Kirkman, you know, is doing other things, too. It's, I mean, he only reads the, this Walking Dead comic once a month, um, and it's just, it seems to be really, really, really drawn out. Like, what? Well, I mean, I think we'll get issue 200 in 2019 or 2020, like, I don't know, you gotta count, because it's an issue per month. So, if we do 12 months, I mean... That would bring us to issue, like, what, 194? So, I mean, towards the end of 2019, early 2020, we'll get issue uh, 200. And, I mean, I, I don't know. That should be a crossroads. If I was Robert Kirkman, that'd be a crossroads, you know? Like, how many more of these freaking things do I do? Um, because the, uh, he's, he's, he's making a lot of them. He's making a lot of them, and... Um, it just it seems to be the story that just keeps going. The story that never ends. <laughs> so, um... Again, as much as I like it, I love dissecting it with you guys. I mean, you got interesting storylines. He gives all of his characters great arcs. Characters die. New characters sprout up. But it seems to be like a rep like it seems to be repetition. Like a bunch of characters die. You get their arcs. Then you get a bunch of new characters. You have their arcs. There's a conflict. Like it, you know. I was talking with my brothers about this a few days ago, and like one of my brothers used to watch The Walking Dead up to like season five or six. And then he stopped it just because he was like, oh, I just see this, 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 is just, this is just repetition. Now, the show can do different things in the comics, which is always why I like watching the show. Because it takes the comic material and, and it adds spark to it. Livens it up. It's obviously live action and you get to see all of this stuff in a different form. Some stuff that works for the comics doesn't work for the show. And I like to see how that is adapted. Um... So, so with all of that said, I definitely think that, um, I definitely think there should be some end game. I think Kirkman at issue 200 should assess where, I mean, like, will the, will the Commonwealth be defeated? Will something, will they just get assimilated into Rick's group by issue 200? I don't know. Um, I mean, Robert Kirkman, he always gives us these really deceptive covers. Like this cover right here. First issue 182, it made me think that John was trying to conspire with Pamela Milton. And, um, you know, because obviously he has some sort of, some animosity towards Rick. Um, but that seems to have gone away with uh, this issue. And so, I mean, Kirkman's always done that. I mean, there were, there was one where Negan was standing over the people kneeling for him. There was one with uh, Dwight holding a machine gun to the back of Rick's head, which didn't even happen. Um, it was, that was just a metaphor for them being angry at each other. Um, so yeah, it, Kirkman's a tricky cat. I mean, he, he's, he's, he does this all the time. He likes to, he likes to keep his audience always, always guessing, which again is a good tactic for storytelling, but I think it works to a point. Like, you know, you can do it a bunch of times and it's effective, but I think if you do it too much, your audience starts to catch on and then like you test their patience, like, Oh, gee, like, are they going to stick around for, you know, 200 more issues or four more seasons of your show if this, if the formula just, it's the same? Like, oh, I'm going to tease you and there's cool villains and this and people are just like, oh, like, all right, Kirkman. Like, you know, there's, there's other, there's other TV shows and other books and things I could be doing with my entertainment time uh, than watching The Walking Dead. So, you know, if I'm not getting some sort of gratification from this, you know, I'm just going to you know, snooze off, so, um, so yeah, that's a unique issue, Kirk, facing Kirkman, I guess, and I really think he should assess where the, sh where his, his, I mean, he probably already is doing it, he probably already knows, and I think he has to have some sort of end game kind of looming in his head, he must have spoken with Scott Gimple and said, hey, Scott, this is kind of where we want the show to end off, he probably now talked to Angela Kang, now that she's show running season nine, so a lot of conversations were probably had, and um, we'll, we'll see what comes of them. Um, so yeah, that is, um, that's about it for me, guys. Um, I appreciate you guys watching this video. I hope you like it. If you want more comic reviews, 
um, the day they come out or the day after. I mean, this is the day after. But if you want that type of content, definitely let me know. A couple of fans had messaged me and said, hey, we want to see you review the comics. So here I am reviewing the comics. This is my first one ever for 182. And um, I guess you'll get one of these videos a month if I'm reviewing every comic book issue. Um, you know, this was, a, again, this was a fun issue. Um, we'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. Um, just a lot of, you know, lighthearted. I mean, she got to see all of the communities, which was cool. Um, so a lot of progression made in that area. So, um, so yeah, thank you guys very much for staying um, connected to me. Um, if you guys want any topics for vlogs in the future, uh, let me know. I mean, next week I know I'm going to be much busier. Um, I'm taking on uh, more responsibilities at my full-time job. Um, and so it's, it's going to get more, a little diff, a little more difficult to do these vlogs than it has been in the past couple of months. But if I can, you know, find a way to do the content, um, I will, I, I mean, I like staying connected to this YouTube, YouTube channel, even though I'm not with Machinima anymore, which I was partnered with them. And then I severed that partnership a few months ago. Well, they severed it actually, because a lot of, a lot of partnership networks are just going away actually on YouTube, just because they're a model that doesn't fit anymore with what YouTube is doing with ad friendly and ad apocalypse. And I don't know, their website's just going to shit. And so, um, the advertisers are just, are sticking around for it. And so, uh, partnership networks are changing. And so now I'm, I'm on my own just with my own AdSense program. Um, and, um, you know, I don't know. I mean, again, I had made, I, I made that vlog the other day. Uh, my last vlog uploaded on my YouTube channel talked about writing and how that's my major passion. And when I seriously start, you know, once, once my books, either in a traditional or a self-published sense come out on Kindle, ebook, uh, physical, you know, hardcover. Um, once you, once I have links and stuff for you guys to pursue these books, then maybe my, I'll make either a U new YouTube channel or I'll put it on here, you know, then there'll be content. But for now, like my writing is very much a private thing that I'm, you know, working on, working on every day, trying to make better and better and better and better and better. And so one day, one day, eventually, you know, it's just like Rick, you know, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow. Eventually, I will release all of this stuff, uh, whether it's with a traditional publishing company or it's just on my own. Um, you know, th that will that'll be a big determining you know factor. And if I, depending on what content I put up, uh, because then I'll have a YouTube persona as like a Walking Dead person, but then I'll also have like this writing background attached. And you know, if the Walking Dead dies out, like I was just saying. Uh, either the comics just get stale or the show without Andrew Lincoln just fails and falls into obscurity. It's going to be harder to do content for you guys because there's obviously a big group of people who like The Walking Dead. And if that starts to go away, then I lose the appeal of my channel because I already started to move away from gaming. I really don't even do gaming anymore. Like, I think the last gaming video I uploaded was from God of War. Uh, <laughs> I just, you know, I, I don't, unless I'm playing with friends or I just, it's a funny clip or something. I just, I don't know. I, I don't see the reason as much to put gameplay on because when I put up the gameplay not as many people watch it and for me it's like well people aren't watching it you know what's what's the point you know um which is a stance I should have had many years ago especially in 2012 when I was uploading videos all the time uh you know parts 50 51 of this game that game I really sh I should have been doing what I'm doing now making vlogs talking with you guys doing that type of stuff because it would have been more engaging back then because now everyone's doing it so I've kind of missed the boat and uh, back then Machinima was rolling in more money and they were able to give out these landish outlandish partnership agreements so all right without going into a huge rant about everything um that's uh, that's it for the review thank you guys for watching and um, I hope you stay tuned for more of my content in the future peace